And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Arena Frostbite. We're going to be playing Midrange Frostbite with a twist. We're going to be trying out the new Arena, Noxus Arena card, um, Noxcrya Arena. We're round in our strongest ally and weakest enemy strike each other. Um, so we're going to be pairing this with Rhyme Tush Shaman, where we have R Round Start, Frostbite the strongest enemy. So that if we're, str we're frostbiting an enemy each round, then at the end of the round, we'll have them strike. Plus all of our other things that frostbite will help out the arena. Um, I'm a little, you know, I'm skeptical here. I think midrange frostbite, just like the regular midrange frostbite is a wonderful deck. And I think it's one of the best decks in Legends of Runeterra. I'm, I don't think that this playing the arena and the Rhyme Touch Shaman is going, going to be an upgrade, but we're going to have to try and see. And so we're going to be playing it here and we're going to see how they do. Should be pretty sweet though. So we're going to, uh, yeah, try that out. All right, so let's play. Um, but besides that, basically the whole rest of the deck is um, is just uh, is just mid range frostbite. If you don't have Sejuani's, if you if you're a little low on wild cards, and you know, maybe you have Ash, but you don't have Sejuani, you could replace Sejuani with Armored Tusk Raider. Um, you just play this card or Tusk Rider. Um, sorry, you, you can play this card instead. Sejuani's Sejuani's a better card, so we're playing Sejuani, but this is you know good um, option. If you have this one, because then this card with the enemies four or less power cannot damage me. This card works really well with the arena so that the, the weakest enemies can strike that the six five and it won't take damage if they're four or less power. No, no, stop. OK, all right, well, let's go play our five games over in ranked and let's see how the arena does. All right, over to Lisa and Diana. Diana's really good. Lee Sin's really good. Both of them together. Very good. I actually, now that I'm thinking about it, you know, like, it was just instincts to kind of mulligan both Ash, but thinking about it more, I kind of feel like I should have kept the second Ash, because the second Ash can, the champion spell, okay, see, re rewarded. Because Ash's champion spell is still a really good... <clears throat> champion spell to have access to flash freeze especially against Lee Sin so I think that's a good good to have the second one I'm through waiting. hey what's up Rush the trap is set. so we're going to have two six six Yetis, because our next two units are going to be Yetis. Question all that you are they go Pale Cascade? Nope. Darn. I wasted that. Alright, so the next two cards are both Yetis. They have to be. So our next, We do know that. The next two draw steps, both 6-6 six, six Yetis. Today, Ash, you'll see true leadership. Gems are superb. Bad for the team, though. Meet Let's attack. Cloaked in silver light. It's like that's not even like the best block for them anyway. See three, six, seven, eight. So yeah, they're just gonna get two gems. Like, even if that would work, and I didn't have Brittle Steel, they would only get two gems, and then they're not going to be able to draw their card. It would get obliterated because they have too many cards in hand. Lee Sin? Darn. I was hoping they would obliterate a Lee Sin. So they've played one Nightfall card now. So in order to give Diana a challenger, they're going to have to play a lot more Nightfall cards. We each hold a world within... These stories were true. Feel pretty good about winning this game. No more lies. Winter is the Freljord's true ruler. 
I cannot turn back. No, rhyme tusk shaman, not rent not, not rent a shaman. <laughs> That's why I'm glad they didn't heal their own Diana. Yep. The game was over. We were one to know. The war is over. Now we rebuild. Karma Lux. Okay, we have the arena. But Usually Karma Lux plays some larger things. I don't know, we're gonna mulligan the arena. I like Hearthguard. I mean, I just like Hearthguard as a card. We're gonna keep that, because it should be a longer game. And so playing Hearthguard on turn five should have uh, more opportunity to give the plus one, plus ones. So this being a little, little bit longer game. But also this being a longer game, I figured that we would probably have more time to find another arena if we so choose. I don't want to keep two five mana cards in hand. Patience. So I'm expecting Remembrance, but maybe they don't have Remembrance. No, they always do. Whenever I play against Remembrance decks, they always have Remembrance on turn three. Hot on the trail. The reason to attack would be to uh, be able to have Brittle Steel available. Um, obviously, I could have attacked with Omen Hawk first before Remembrance, but I'm only, I only missed out on one point of damage by giving myself the opportunity to be able to attack with Trapper in case they didn't have Remembrance. And so I didn't have, like, that's not a very high opportunity cost with it just being one damage. So I think that that was perfectly fine. Um, All right, let's mess some folks up. Problem is, is, I can't really play Ash now, can I? So if I play Ash, I have Troll Chant. They challenge here. Faster than my arrow? I think not. Time to get rowdy. I do like having their things die before potential Radiant Guardian. I do like that. What do you mean, when does the wild card purchase restart? I think you can... I don't understand. Lead the target. So I don't I don't know what the limit is on, on wild cards that you can buy, I don't know. Show me a target. Why would they want to block there and save six lives? Justice will be served. They really want that Radiant Guardian to be a 4-5 tough, huh? But that's not even a good trade. Just wait and challenge the next turn. Make me use another spell. So if you go to the if you go to like your collection, go to cards, you know, you can click on like unowned, you can find whatever card that you wanted to use a wild card on, click on it, and there's an option for like wild card or shards or coins. And so if you want you can you can use coins to craft it. Winter is the uh, yeah, so the question... Yeah, there's not really a point of buying a wild card. There's not really a point. Sends chills up my spine. So Ash is at two. Tacking will be three. Icefell Archer could be four. Icefell Archer could be five. So we could go Icefell, Icefell... Four, five. Play Sejuani is better than Icefield Archer, but Sejuani only makes it four. We can't play Sejuani and then go to five unless I guess we brittle steel. We'd have to like brittle steel our own ash <laughs> unless they play something smaller. Oh, you're welcome, Dolphin Gaming. Yeah, anytime you have questions, feel free to ask. Alright, I'll, I'll try to draw. Um, I'll try to draw the arena. The problem is, is I think we're going to be killing our opponent before we could possibly draw the arena. At least that's my plan. 
Ah, oh, got stunned. So we have 10, 15, 18. Okay, yeah, they're still dead. Uh, yeah, like, it, that's, uh, what's the thoughts on the $10,000 tournament? That's gonna be, that's awesome. So, yeah, it looks like it's gonna be 10000 for first place. I'm, I definitely think that there's going to be more prizes than just that. Yeah, you know, like, there's, you know, it's not gonna be just only first place gets something, so. Um, yeah, that, that's awesome that, you know, get, hopefully that'll help build a more competitive scene, and they'll have that, like, every two months. One of those tournaments. All right, we're going to keep all of these, because I feel like Reckoning could be a way for us to win this game. They go wide, all that kind of stuff. We'll, actually, we'll move in Culling Strike. Yeah, with having Reckoning, we don't need Culling, Culling Strike. We do need to find something with 5 plus power. Another Reckoning. That's unfortunate. Yeah, you can only have 40 decks in your collection. I think it's like 40. And so you have to delete decks to, to put in new decks. And that's a big bummer. That's something that I have to do all the time. Because I, I, um, I play four different decks on stream every single day. That's what I do every day um, here at this time. Except for Wednesdays I stream at... I have a night stream. But of course, with that... Uh, it does mean that I run out of room very fast. Every day I have to delete like four decks and put in four more. It's annoying. Time for the main event. All right, where are we going to use this Ice Veil Archer? The true welcome. I don't know. I'll go Draven. Yeah, we'll go Draven. And I'll just keep Omen Hawk around to be able to block again because they're gonna have like their their attack on turn five. I'm, I have to survive their attack on turn five, and so Omen Hawk will just be another blocker for me. So I'm gonna need blockers. Hey, there we go. The trap is set. Because I need to play Hearth Guard on turn five, and then turn six we have Reckoning. Hot on the trail. Right now, it's just six elusive. Hoping it stays that way. Hoping no vision. Please just stay this way. Just six. Okay. Just six. Many tribes under one banner. Flame Chompers. So they would play something more valuable than that. They can keep their Draven alive if they use both Spinning Axes. Now they just they just played something that would have been good to discard to Spinning Axe. Okay, not keeping Draven alive. All right, so we got one Reckoning and we got rid of all of those elusives. Hope I get to Reckoning again next turn. I have the best job. Which is pretty likely. This doesn't seem like where you'd go right to open attacks. They'd probably play some other stuff first. Probably. The sun got me cold. All right, Rec looks like Reckoning is going to do it. G G's.
Yeah, maybe today's actually rank up Sunday. That's, yeah, that's what it definitely feels like. Doesn't it? Alright, Twisted Swain. So, none of these cards are really that great for just, like, the opener. I actually think I'm going to just mulligan everything. Send them all back. Ugh. I want Omen Hawk and that kind of stuff first. Like, I feel Archer being a 3-1, it's just too... It's too weak. We definitely want Omen Hawks and um, and and um, Hearth Guards before these assessors, not after. Many tribes under one banner. That was kind of them to wait. Get bloody, get paid. Time to make some coin. <clears throat> if I just let this happen and then they go ravenous flock on the hearth guard. Is that something that we want? Would I rather brittle steel? I think I'd rather brittle steel. Because that's not exactly something that I want to happen. Yeah, Arena could... The thing with Arena and the Undying is that you need to have your Undying be the... Only partner. Um, Today we fight as one. You, need the, you need to have the Undying be the your strongest ally. And so that's not easy to pull off. Just playing that and drawing a card. This arena doesn't really seem like anything that we need. card we would normally have instead of this would be Troll Chant. If I only have two copies of Troll Chant, I would want another. So basically the two arenas are like one Troll Chant, one Culling Strike. Um, troll Chant would have been helpful. This is a really good draw, because this, this allows me to have Archer plus Culling Strike available for Leviathan, if they're going to be going Leviathan. It does not look like they're going Leviathan. I will go Culling Strike on that instead. So they've played two Ravenous Flocks so far. Come on. Who has the serpentine? A chill in the air. Yeah, Twisted Fate is really good. I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> that card's really good. Make it worth my while. We live here. So I wanted to frostbite the house spider, keep them from being able to block with the house spider. So they have to block with Zap's Brafin instead. If they choose to block. I hope they got like three eight mana cards there. I hope they just drew like two Leviathans and a Riptide Rex. And so they all just get tossed or obliterated at the end of turn. 
That's what I'm hoping. Pass. Twist of Fates at five. I kind of need this to kill like both of these. This calling strike. I guess I can rely on Arena next turn killing Twisted Fate. They may level up Twisted Fate by then. They had all three Twisted Fates in hand. Merely pawns in a greater game. At least they obliterated those two cards, those two eight drops. One Rex, one Leviathan down, but still. Now this game's heating yeah. up. Alright, so going with this right here, so that. You know, so basically, I don't want to go Harsh Winds afterwards. No, obliterate more 8 mana cards. I don't want to go Harsh Winds afterwards and like Harsh Winds something else circle. also, and they count that other thing as like the weakest enemy. I need Twisted Fate to be the weakest enemy. We drew like the only thing in our deck that would not have been 5 power for Assessor. <laughs> That's the only card in our deck. Okay, so good news is Twisted Fate's gone. Bad news, they have six cards, and I have one. No, that's not a five power unit either. Come on. Our next unit's gonna get plus four, plus four, so it has to. It's still gonna have the extra Omen Hawk bonus. We have we have two Omen Hawk bonuses for the next unit. Deploy. Yeah, it was a close game. I think if, if Arena was... Um, troll Chant, I think we would have had a better chance because we would have had, had been able to put more pressure on Bale to keep all those other things alive. But the, them having those three Twisted Fates was a killer. Right, because they, they had the Twisted Fate in play, then they played Twisted Fates Pick a Card. And so then we killed their Twisted Fate after they played the Pick a Card. And then they just dropped a, another Twisted Fate and it got the bonus from the Pick a Card. You know, like that was a killer. Dang. Yeah, that's that's maybe where you have to go with arena is just try to put try to get as many big units in play as fast as possible. Like that's where you start playing like your three mana five four and that kind of stuff. It's just still it's just pretty inconsistent. It costs a lot of mana. The opponent can play around it fairly easily. 
There's lots of downsides to the card. Explosives primed. Everything's in place. We'll, we'll try that next week. Put Lulu and Tom Kench together. I'll, I'll build that for next week. All right, so we're really far behind. Um, ho hoping that one mana yetis help catch us up. Would have preferred to draw one mana yeti right there. They got a lot of Nexus damage, which this deck usually has a lot of Nexus damage. We can be in for some trouble. No one's the wiser. Looks like they'll probably just do the other 11 points. Just all Nexus damage. Incentivizing them to want to attack with that thing. All right, so we're gonna frostbite that. Block here, block here, here, and here. I'll go down to four. Alternatively, I could, go to, I could go down to two if I block this, or I, I could take two less. I could go to six if I could block that way, and then they keep a two-one. Over there. We're going to four. Shaman can, like, they'll just trade Shaman with the 3 2. Oh no, they're not trading the 3 2. Not Nexus damage. We're not dead. Tread carefully. Bitter cold. Not dead yet. Should be game. Hopefully. Yeah! No Noxion Fervor. Alright, 4 and 1. GG's. Alright, so there we go. Arena Frostbite. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I think that our. our Deck is probably just better without the arena and, you know, just regular mid-range frostbite. Probably going to be a little bit stronger. 
Um, basically, what uh, as far as my my normal um, my normal mid range frostbite deck looks like this. It's only four cards, or I guess it's a few cards different. So um, let's see that same top end. Cause, so I basically I have three babbling Bjerg, another culling strike, another troll chant, and an Avaros and Sentry. So six cards different from what this version was. So the other version, the arena version, we went with uh, the flash freeze. So like two flash freeze, two arena, and two rhyme tusk shaman. Different from the from the normal version over those. Still good card. Still a good deck. Still a lot of good cards. As you saw, we still went four one. Um, I love love these frostbite cards these days. I think this is a really good and really underrated deck as everybody's kind of focusing on on Bilgewater, Noxus, and on Lee Sin. Uh, I think this is a, a real good deck. All right, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments. Anything about the deck, any of the other decks we've been playing, um, what have you been playing, what have you been having fun with, what do you want to see on the stream, what kind of decks do you want me to build, all that kind of stuff. I love seeing those comments. All right, thank you so much for watching, though. And I will see you for the next video.